Hello everybody, today we're going to be talking about uh, new mechanics revealed for Elden Ring. Um, you may know the other couple one of these, but I'm going to be covering them just so everybody knows about all these new mechanics. First, the build crouching, which is self essentially. We've had this in Sekiro before, but not everybody may have played Sekiro, and I'm already telling you now, this stuff looks 10 times better in my opinion than it does in Sekiro, because with Sekiro it was like a one time done, it was like an opening type of thing. Whereas in Elden Ring, there's more stuff to it, you can get past enemies and all that, and you have the tools and all that at your disposal, like the sleep blasts as we saw. So, we might see some more pacifists, some more like people going past enemies, just to be able to explore and, you know, get to that shiny loot and all that at the end. Then we have the Grace Guidance, which are meant to help guide the player in the general direction. The player does not have to follow these though, and they can go any other way they want, so you do have that general sense of exploration as you are all familiar with in the Souls game, but the Grace Guidance is there to guide you in general direction since, you know, this, area is, this game, I should say, is going to be a lot bigger than, you know, previous games, it's not going to be as linear and all that, it's going to be more open for the player to explore. Next we have Stance Breaking, which I want to say is similar to the Posture System, sorry, Posture System we have had from, again, Sekiro, which I do like the taking elements from, you know, pretty much all the previous games, like, this game is going to be great. But essentially, it's like a guard break and all that in Dark Souls, but you have more options, you could say, to do it. Because as we saw in the gameplay and all that, we saw the player jump from above and do an attack whilst in midair. And that did a lot more posture and stance breaking his opponent, which then let him get a critical. So, people which played Sekiro will probably easily recognise this, but then people which lost the Souls will probably recognise this. It's just in a different way and there's just more options to do it. Then lastly we have the stakes of Marika and the stakes of Marika are like another type of respawn type of thing. I honestly aren't too sure about these because it seems like a second option to your like little bonfires you're going to be finding and all that. These are just like another option you can go to instead of the site of grace and you can like be revived there instead so who knows maybe these would be outside like bosses or something um we're gonna have to wait and see on them because these definitely sound like a new thing and all that but they were the only mechanics they initially revealed now we have more mechanics which are getting into more of the like little details and all that and these may be the more obscure ones which people don't know Firstly, we have stuff to do with enemy groups and fighting them, and that is when you kill a group of enemies, as we've saw happen plenty of times, and which you'll, you know, be doing in the game, that's going to refurnish your flask, which I, I don't know what the flask is actually called this time. I think it might be a crimson-like flask or something, but in another way, it's your Estus, which you're familiar with. And all this will vary depending on the enemies, and maybe how many enemies or how difficult they were. But we don't know if this is limited or something, but I see this similar to how the humanity system works in things like Dark Souls 1, where you killed enough enemies and accumulated enough hidden points over time, and then you just got a soft humanity for free. I'd say think of something similar like that for that one. And then we have the multiplayer menu apparently, and with that, I think honestly, this might just be your own menu, and this is where you're going to access things like the multiplayer items and all that to do things like co op, potentially invade, and all that. And things like the password system and all that will be returning as well. But the thing with the multiplayer menu, I think this might be a bit more easy to like access, you could say, than previous games because f uh, from software and by uh, Namco did comment on how they wanted to make like the games more accessible and all that in a weird way. Don't worry, things like difficulty and all that will be staying there the same because I know this is a very like controversial sub subject and all that. But at least things like the multiplayer would be easier because I think I simple it was in Dark Souls 3 where all you had to do was buy something compared to something like Dark Souls 1 where you had to, you know, go find Celeb and all that. Which you could have arguably potentially missed. Now it might, might just be a simple case of, oh, I have this menu, you can do a summon sign or invade or something. Then we have the summoning spirits, which says you can weirdly see right now in the background. And with summoning spirits, um, this is something called a spirit caster bell where the player uses ashes and consumes that FP, that magic bar, to summon them. They can only do one spirit at a time, and you can also not summon spirits when in multiplayer. I think this is definitely the right direction to go, it like gives more um, 
ideas and like versatility you could say to um, a mage build and all that and the reason I think this is because you could summon some like group of enemies that say to distract as you be able to cast on that with the spells but I wonder what will happen if you have some of these guys summoned in and then summon a player in. I it will probably just get rid of them, I think that would be the simple thing to do but I'm glad that you can't have both at once because that would make you just be able to wreck a bunch of things and might make the game a bit too easy in my opinion. And um, lastly we do have the big thing, more multiplayer details and that is simply to cooperate with people, invade people or do this competitive mode which I have no idea what that's about, let me know what you think in the comments. You will just need the items from the multiplayer menu and all that to do them. They do clarify on this and all that, you know, you have to go from the main menu, select the mine and all that, just like anything else. So if you ever for some reason can't find these things, just check and make sure you're online, that's simply all I have to say. But with that guys, that is going to do it for me today. I hope everyone is looking forward to the network test, it's only literally one night away, god it's almost like you're sleeping for Christmas or something. But um. I hope everyone's looking forward to it and just like, look forward to seeing the gameplay of this game and just I hope everyone's excited for what will all give me from soft's probably best work today. But who knows, will it be better than Bloodborne? We'll have to wait and see because I still hold that game really high in my opinion. But thank you all for watching and thank you for the support in the last video as well, I really appreciated it. And I will catch you all in the next one, so take care guys.